Okay, welcome to part three, the final part here in our Step Up uh, Transformer for Moving Coil Cartridges video series. And um, there's a guy I ran across a little while back uh, named Ned Clayton, and this is his eBay page. And uh, if you'll notice, he makes these nice little uh, black boxes here with um, inputs, a ground, an output, uh, a switch to be able to switch to uh, left or right ground and floating as well as uh, high and low and then uh, on this one he actually has mounted inside here you can see some biodynamics um, SUT transformers but um, this guy makes several different variations that I found out there he makes some some modules with um, with little octal sockets on the top here for um, like the uh, Alltech um, transformers and I also saw this out there. It's not by him but you can tell someone had built one here um, on his platform using uh, some peerless transformers and you can see the price of these things um, depending on the transformers in them can vary greatly um, so at any rate I reached out to Ned and said hey I'd be interested in um, you know, one of your little uh, boxes here, but uh, maybe uh, with the words on it that I want, and maybe some cutouts for the transformers I'm planning to use. And he was he was great to work with on this project, I have to say. So anybody wanting to build their own, you don't want to go to the trouble of uh, doing crinkle cut crinkle paint on a box and uh, and uh, redesigning a whole box. Uh, he'll hook you up uh, with a decent price here on just some boxes. So that's what I did. And let's jump over to the bench and take a look. All right, here we go. This is the little box I got from uh, from Ned. Um, as you can see here now, we've got our two little um, triad transformers that we have kind of uh, mapped everything out on at this point in time. And it's just going to be a matter of uh, you know taking the bottom off this box and getting these things mounted in there. As you can see here, the bottom comes off. It's got uh, just four chrome screws. Probably the only thing I'm going to do to modify this thing a little bit is I'm going to get just some little rubber feet once I put these back on here, the screws back on it, just to uh, keep from scratching up the uh, the plate or anything. But um, as you can see, he sent me this thing. Um, it's got the two switches in here, kind of wired, um, bolted in, ready to go. But he went ahead and wired up the grounding configuration here, and let's take a look at that. Okay, let's look at how he's wired up this grounding. And by the way, he hasn't soldered these low, um, wires. He just kind of left them here for me to solder. But um, So if you'll notice here, you would have um, left and right, right? And left here and right here. And then you've got this ground lug here in the middle. And if you'll notice, this side, whoops, this side right here is the input, and this side right here is the output. So what they've done here is, if you'll notice the switch here, if you put it in the very middle, I've got to get this oriented. If you get the switch here in the very middle, all that the ground lug here would be tied to would be the chassis of this box. It would not be tied to either sets of inputs or outputs. But if you flip the switch um, so that the connection is over on this side over here, right? Well then what you would have is you would have this wire here which would be the left um, and by the way there's a wire coming over here to this left and it would be connected here as well as it's bridged over here and to the right hand side as well. So what you end up with is just what it says when you go over on this side here you would have left plus right. However if you flip the switch the other way, all you would have on it over here um, would be the right hand side here. So you'd have on this side connected here and uh, connecting over to this wire. So it's really all about do you pick up your ground um, from your cartridge um, from the input here or do you pick up your ground from um, the input and uh, both left and right here uh, which would also be tied to the outputs or do you kind of pick up your ground here just from this box in other words kind of a floating ground to either the inputs or outputs and the way this works out you just kind of have to try it depends on your turntable setup depends on your preamp setup and a little bit depends upon the, uh, the the cartridge and how it's wired up so it gives you three options here to kind of play around with what might be best in your scenario 
Okay, up next we've got here, we've got the high and low gain switches here, and one on each side. And if we kind of come back to our little schematic we had earlier, remember, um, if you're bridging across the whole thing here, that would be a lower gain than if you're just picking one side of this. Uh, because when you just pick one side here, remember you have less turns on one side, more turns on the other, that's a higher gain. When you're going all the way across A to C here, then you have a higher number of turns here against an even higher number of turns here, but the ratio um, is lower. So uh, A to C would be less gain than let's say going A to B. And I'm going to wire this thing because we've got the little phase dots here. I'm going to wire it A to B, A to C, and E to D on the output. Okay, as you can see I've just routed all the wires. I like to use these uh, K locking nuts that have the built-in lock washers on them. Really good for uh, anything you're working on. And I'm uh, going to tighten these down and get them mounted in. Okay, we got all four of them bolted down. If you'll notice here on the middle one, I came along with just a little chassis tag like this. These things are available easily from uh, like Tubes and More uh, or Antique Electronics Supply. But um, I'm creating a grounding point here. And the reason for that, if you remember this thing here on each transformer, I had a little shield wire here. Um, I'm actually going to tie that shield wire off here and solder it to the... Uh, to that uh, point. I'm going to try to leave all these tags on this transformer. I know it won't look the best, but um, it's kind of important for somebody down the road if they ever want to reuse these things for something else to not have to go through the same little uh, pin in and out thing we did. Okay, as you can see here, I've, I've wired up um, one of them here on the output. And I'm having to, um, you can see here, tag on some little uh, some wire here to extend most of these and then what I'm doing is just sliding down over some heat shrink tubing and uh, getting it, the solder joint right there in the very middle and kind of uh, you know, making jumpers out of all these. I'm, I'm going to have to. These leads aren't long enough to reach everywhere I need them to. Okay, as you can see I've taken the out, both of the outputs here on this side and taken them to the right or red uh, um, input here and I've taken both of the outs on this side and done the same thing over here. Took one to center, one to ground, one to center, one to ground and I made sure that the phase dots um, on both of these I took to ground and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. The phase dots are just a reference and I'm going to use it as uh, for ground on all these. Um, and then we're going to jump over to the input side. <coughs> one thing I learned um, Got to be careful using uh, uh, these are I printed these on a these are a temperature printed um, um, postage labels that I used and so when I got my uh, when I got my um, little iron to uh, heat up the um, heat shrink it kind of uh, turned all my paper black but fortunately I can still read them. Okay, we've got it all wired up. I'll just show you an example on one side. The other side would be identical. So we basically came out of the um, the output here on one side here, which would have been E, right, with the dot. And I took E with the dot over here to ground. And I came out the other side, which was D here. And I brought D over and you can see right here, D tagged it right here to the uh, to the center post on the output here of red. Okay, so that gets my output done. And then what I've done is I've taken um, and came to the little switch here and I took a piece of wire and I fed it off the center tap. I only use one side of the switch. Fed off the center tap here and ran over and went into this input here um, which would be the input on the red side. So everything on this side of the thing is kind of the red, um, or right-hand channel. And um, so that's feeding in. And then what I've got is I'm switching between either C here, um, which if you'll notice, if I'm switching then, basically I'm going between the output here of A, I mean on the input from A to C, and I'm feeding C on this side of the switch here, which if you flip it over um, would actually be the low side. In other words, you're going all the way from A to C here. And on the other side here, uh, it's kind of hard to see, but I brought B, 
which is the center tap here. I brought B over um, to this other lug, which if you flip the switch to that side um, to connect, to engage these two, that would be connecting your two highs together, um, and, or your high side together, and feeding over to the input. So basically you're coming in and you're making a decision here at this point. Um, do I feed here into um, C? as in here, or do I feed into A as in here, because A I've tied to ground, um, C or B, because I've tied A to ground um, on this side. So hopefully that makes sense for you. Um, we've got the shield here in the middle, um, both of these tied to a common point. So at this point, it's a matter of getting the cover back on this thing and testing it out. So at this point, what I've got here is a couple cables. That one end is an RCA jack and the other end is BNC. So it's perfect um, for feeding out of my um, signal generator into one of these. And then I've got another one here that's a little bit longer, the exact same scenario. I'll feed out the other channel into my oscilloscope. And we can make sure that these things um, you know, are kind of lining up the way we want. And I'm also going to use just another oscilloscope probe in channel 2 here and um, connect it here on the input um, just to make sure that our input phases uh, dots are following the output here. Okay, you can kind of see the setup I've got going, feeding in um, on this one, feeding out on this one, and let me take you to the oscilloscope. All right, you can see here um, on the input here is this little bitty signal, and on the output is this great big signal here. And you can see the uh, that they are. You know, I can turn the uh, the input up just a little bit. I, uh, I'm at 0.2 volts versus 5 volts, but you can see they're in phase with each other. And hey, you can also see if I crank this on up just a little bit. Not a lot of phase shift at all. Just a slight hair here, more on this side than that. But I'm really happy with how this channel turned out. And all I'm going to do now is move the. Uh, the inputs and outputs over here Oops. to another channel and I'm going to come over here do the exact same thing I did before and let's go take a look at the oscilloscope okay same setup both on 5 volts peak to peak here I'm going to crank this one up to show you uh, phase they're really really nice uh, in phase with each other and um, I thought I'd show you too on this thing as I flip the um, the little flip switch on it, watch this. Oops, wrong switch. Um, you can see that's on uh, low gain and that's on high gain. So you can see that uh, the little switch uh, doesn't change the input but changes the amount of output you're getting on this thing significantly uh, just by flipping the little, little switch underneath here from uh, kind of low, low to high. So. Guys and gals, I am extremely pleased with how this thing turned out, and uh, we're going to kind of uh, leave it here. I always, I always take all these things down into my little engineering notebook here. This thing is, uh, I've had quite a few of them over the years, but uh, full of wealths of knowledge. Um, you see, here's a great example. I've got two Western Electric 618Bs, and I had to measure out the uh, the holes. I sent them to this uh, the same Ned Clayton guy, and he... Uh, made me a box for one of those. I'm going to get around to doing that one of these days. As you can see I went through the uh, 618Bs and did the exact same little pin out, map out, uh, resistances, etc. Having a little notebook like this really handy for uh, for this kind of work. Okay and there's the finished product. Uh, beautiful little unit. It's got the two triad 32-B-8 transformers on them. Uh, had him engra you know, kind of engraved the top here to say that. Um, you can see this little flip switch right here uh, from high to low. As I flip it, we get high, we get low. Really just happy with the way this thing's turned out overall. Got the bottom back on it. These things uh, look solid and uh, couldn't be any happier. I actually, uh, I, the moving coil cartridge I had in house here turns out to have a cantilever issue right now and so I've ordered a new one hopefully that's probably be my Christmas present but I chose the HANA EL uh, ended up getting it from Gene Rubin Audio and um, kind of 
hopefully you get that thing here soon and um, give that thing a try on the bench. When I do, I'll, uh, I'll make another little video of some sort for it. But you get the idea. It's how you put one together. Um, you've gone through steps from beginning to end. If you found something like this just on an old piece of junk gear, let's say the sticker was worn off of it. You don't even know what it is. You can still figure out whether it's a suitable SUT transformer from this video series, hopefully. So thanks for watching, everybody. We had a lot of fun with this one, and hopefully by the holidays we'll be listening to this thing.